Welcome to my channel Lenovate. In this video, we will going to discuss about the lacrimal apparatus, the pathway of the tears from the lacrimal gland to the nasolacrimal duct. We will going to discuss in this video. Also, we will going to discuss about the innervation of the lacrimal apparatus. So, the lacrimal apparatus that is very easy and you can say the very complex in the way of its drainage. So, starting from the lacrimal apparatus contents, what are the contents forming the lacrimal apparatus? In this diagram, you can see all the contents of the lacrimal apparatus, including the lacrimal gland that is present laterally and on the upper part of the eye at the superciliary arches. Here, there are the superciliary arches on the lateral and the superior side of the eye. These lacrimal glands are going to release their secretion into the ducts that are called as the lacrimal excretory ducts. From the lacrimal excretory ducts, what happens? The fluid that is produced from the lacrimal gland is passed from the lacrimal excretory ducts to the way of the lacrimal leg that is present on the medial canthus of the eye. From the lacrimal, uh, lacrimal la leg, the fluid is gone to the lacrimal canalicula. There will be presence of a two lacrimal canalicula, both superior and inferior, that will ultimately drain into the lacrimal sac. So, the lacrimal canalicula or the lacrimal punctua are the presence of a small holes on the middle canthus of the eye. That you can say the lacrimal lake drain into the lacrimal canthus. Then from the lacrimal canthus, there will be drainage of the fluid. There is a lacrimal fluid also called as the tears are going to produce uh, present in a sac or you can say there is accumulation of the fluid into the sac that is called as the lacrimal sac present just below the lacrimal lake. The sac is also called as the lacrimal sac is the upper part extension or you can say the upper dilatation of the nasolacrimal duct. So the fluid that is accumulated in the lacrimal sac will going to ultimately drain into the nasolacrimal duct. Then what happens, the nasolacrimal duct will going to drain into the inferior concha of the nose. You can say the inferior meatus. This nasolacrimal duct will ultimately open to the inferior meatus of the nose, that is in the inferior concha of the nose. And then there is a drainage of the fluid in the nasal cavity from the nasolacrimal duct. So this is the whole drainage of the fluid from the lacrimal gland to the nasolacrimal duct and ultimately into the nasal cavity. So what happens when there is any blockage at the level of excretory ducts of the lacrimal gland or at the level of the nasolacrimal duct? What happens? There will be no presence of a tears and there will be, you can say, the slippage of the tear from the lateral side of the eye. There will be no drainage into the nasal cavity and there will be pathological condition can occur in which there will be swelling of the eye, inflammation of eye or other itching of the eye or other uh, conditions that are related to the blockage. Also, the nasolacrimal duct can be blocked causing a pathological condition that may be very severe. So, this was all about the lacrimal apparatus and how this lacrimal apparatus is formed starting from the lacrimal gland, then drainage into the lacrimal excretory ducts that go whole away to the eye, into the lacrimal lake, then to the lacrimal sac and ultimately to the nasolacrimal duct that drain into the inferior matrix of the nasal cavity. Now coming to the innervation of this whole lacrimal apparatus, especially the lacrimal gland. So the innervation of the lacrimal gland is of from three sources. It may be sensory innervation coming from the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve that is not shown here. So the sensory division is coming from the ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. The second part of this innervation is the somatic uh, uh, sympathetic innervation, the sympathetic innervation, and the parasympathetic innervation. So we are going to discuss about the parasympathetic innervation first that is coming from the both preganglionic and the postganglionic fibers. Because the parasympathetic innervation is also called as the secretomotor innervation to the lacrimal gland, this parasympathetic innervation having the preganglionic fibers from the nerve that is called as the greater petrosal nerve that is coming from the facial nerve. Here you can see the facial nerve is going to produce the fibers through greater petrosal nerve and then this greater petrosal nerve will going to pass 
through the pterygoid canal and become the nerve of pterygoid canal and in the pterygopalatine ganglia and then joined with the post ganglionic parasympathetic fibers that are coming from the zygomatic nerve that is the branch of maxillary nerve so when the maxillary nerve passes from the foramen rotundum and release release uh, you can say give out its branch that is zygomatic branch this zygomatic branch anastomose with the preganglionic fibers of the deep pet greater petrosal nerve and the zygomatic nerve synapse with the preganglionic fibers so the postganglionic fiber carried from the zygomatic nerve through the zygomatic temporal and zygomatic of facial branch and then ultimately will be going to supply the parasympathetic innervation to the lacrimal gland through the lacrimal nerve so this was about the parasympathetic innervation including the preganglionic from the deep petrosal and uh, great, uh, greater petrosal sorry the preganglionic are coming from the greater petrosal nerve from the facial nerve and the postganglionic parasympathetic are coming from the zygomatic branch from the maxillary nerve while that of sympathetic innervation to the lacrimal gland is coming from the internal carotid plexus that is coming through the deep petrosal nerve the deep petrosal nerve will go its way uh, along the pterygopalatine ganglia and join the parasympathetic innervation and ultimately supply the lacrimal gland so the gland is carrying the sensations from the sensory route from the parasympathetic having the preganglionic and postganglionic and ultimately from the sympathetic that is coming from the internal carotid plexus through the deep petrosal nerve so this is all about the innervation of the lacrimal gland i hope you will explain well for any query comment below thank you for watching subscribe for more give feedback on our facebook page thank you for